Do you find yourself overwhelmed with your CRM and lead generation? I've had a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with our agents here, coaching sessions talking about where can we support you more in 2023? How can we skill you up? How can we help you more to sell more houses? Because that's our singular focus here at our team is selling houses. That's how you make money in real estate. And invariably, the answer that I got was I'm overwhelmed by the CRM or I don't know where to start my lead generation. And it's normal. I get it. There's a lot of systems, a lot of tech involved. And we just walked out of a training that we did for our team. And it was all about implementation, not theory, but step by step how to do everything. And what we developed was your appointment setting checklist. And I want to share this with everyone here because it's super, super critical. The appointment setting checklist is this. You've got to understand and ask yourself a couple of questions. So when you get ready to go make phone calls, because we're not just making calls to make calls. We're not here to do lazy follow-up like checking in. We're here to have meaningful conversations with folks that want to transact in real estate. And when you do the little things, when you take all the steps, and when you make it about the person, not the property, whether it's a seller or a buyer, you're going to gain more traction and have a better shot at winning the client. So in order to do that, you've got to have a game plan going in because the longer a conversation goes, the higher likelihood you set an appointment. You want to keep people on the phone. So I'm going to run you through the questions you want to be asking yourself that we put together in this checklist. So number one, what time block are you utilizing for lead generation? Is it the 8 to 11 time block? Is it the 4 to 6 time block? When are you dedicating your time to appointment setting? Because that is the goal of every single one of these calls. And then once you answer that first question, what time block are you using, and you have that dedicated time in there, and you know what the game plan is, then you've got to decide next, who are you calling? Are you calling your hot people? Are you calling nurture leads? Are you calling neighbors of a home you just sold? Are you calling expireds for sale by owners? What are you doing, and who are you calling? Because once you determine what your call sheet looks like and create that call sheet, I wouldn't be hopping around from calling a hot buyer to an expired to a circle dial. I'd have like kind prospects grouped together so you're in the same mindset on these calls. And I'd be labeling them and making sure I finish out each call sheet. So who are you going to call? Make that determination and know what your plan is. So now you know when you're doing it, you know who you're going to call. The next question is, how many calls are you going to make? What's your goal? What's your number you're trying to hit? and put that list together. You've got the when, you've got the who, now what script are you going to use? What OFQ are you going to use? That's the Phil Jones opening fact question, which is every single sales script that's out there. The opening fact question is, the opening isn't gonna change, it's hi, it's Tom here with Remax. I'm following up with you as promised. The facts will. Rates might be coming down. Inventory may be down. There may be a sale on the street. You might have properties to show a buyer. That's the fact. You insert the fact there. And the question is, just out of curiosity, when would be a good time to schedule a tour? Or when would be a good time for us to meet to go over what these homes are selling for and how that might affect the value of your property? You've got to ask more questions in these scripts. And Every single script that's out there, it's an OFQ format. Opening, fact, question. So again, I'm going to re keep reviewing here. It's important. We got the when, we got the who, we got the what script. The next is what voicemail are you dropping? And are you pre-recording it? Because you're going to save a heck of a lot of time. And these should be value-based, not, hey, it's Tom Tool here. I'm calling to check up on you and see if you're still looking to make a move. That's lazy follow-up. And lazy people don't win in business. The follow-up message should be something like, hey, it's Tom Tool here with Remax, and I'm calling you because there's a lot of noise out there around the housing market right now, and it's really hard for consumers to understand what's actually happening in the marketplace. I've got some important data I wanted to review with you that could impact your next real estate decision. Give me a call back at ABC phone number, and we can talk more about how that affects your real estate needs. That's an intentional voicemail. I'd have four or five of these pre-recorded ready to drop so you're not leaving the same voicemail over and over and over again. So now you know what voicemail you're leaving.
Then what is the follow-up text or what's the follow-up email if you don't speak to somebody? What data are you putting out there? What information are you putting out there? And are you attaching a video to it? You can take one of the KCM charts from our friends at Keeping Current Matters explaining why 2008 and 2023 are nowhere near being close to each other. And if you do that accompanied with a video and maybe some text copy in the email and you send that out to every person you don't speak to, well, that's a heck of a lot better. Hey, just try calling. When are you ready to move? Because that is lazy follow-up. And that's what we're trying to avoid here. So what deliverable are you going to give to the people that you don't talk to? The people that you do talk to, I'd argue that you want to have a personalized video sent along with your resume and reviews saying something like, hey, Nick, thanks so much for taking my call today. Totally get that you and Michelle are still trying to figure out what's going to be the best move for you and your family. And I want you to know I'm here to be a resource. Here's my cell, and I'll make sure to follow up as planned. Simple, easy. Just put the video to it. People love video. So now you know what you're going to send, whether you talk to them or you don't talk to them. When's the next outreach attempt? When's your next follow-up? Are you scheduling that in your CRM? And lastly, did you do all the prep work before you time blocked? And if you follow this checklist and you get all those steps ready, you can focus on what matters most, which is the consumer on the other end of the phone, having a real conversation about their needs, meeting them where they're at, having empathy, and ultimately finding the people that want a guide in the current marketplace. That's how you win. That's how you prep. So now you got to go implement. Because if you don't implement, you can watch this video as much as you want. It's not going to help your business.